Okay, it is 2.30. Are we ready to start? Welcome, everybody, to our first virtual tour and YSS check-in. I'm really excited about today, and I'm really happy to see that all of you could make it. This program is made possible by our Youth Services section of the Wisconsin Library Association. And by the way, I'm Florence from the Bloomer Public Library, and I'll be hosting today. Today, we'll, we will be talking to Valerie Spooner. She is a youth services librarian from the Russ County Community Library in Ladysmith. And we'll also be talking to, to Monica Levold, the youth services librarian from the River Falls Public Library. We'll take tours, discuss fall programming, and ways our colleagues are dealing with this pandemic. If you are interested in hosting a tour, please let me know. Before we start, I would just like to read our YSS statement. YSS advocates for professional empowerment, collaboration, and innovative, inclusive, and intentional service. YSS provides a forum and resource for people in Wisconsin libraries who share a commitment to serving children and young adults, their parents, caregivers, and teachers. It is a vital, dynamic group, as you can see, yay! Um, and welcomes new members. Just check the box on your WLA renewal or membership application and you're all set. And with that, I'll turn it over to Valerie from the Ladysmith Library. And please feel free to ask questions if you have any. Okay, Valerie. Hello, everybody. Um, it is a little noisy out here. I hope you can hear me. Um, I wanted to do a full tour of what we're doing um, for the pandemic. So that means I start outside and I'm going to turn my camera around and put my mask on since we're going into the building. There we go. So this is the front of our building. We have Valerie? Her phone might have disconnected when she walked out. Oh. Let's give her a minute. Look at all the signage. Okay. Hmm. Well, maybe we start with Monica. Maybe. Shall I switch the spotlight view? Yeah. Let's do it. Okay, oh, someone should visit her. her. Oh. If oh. She, oh, oh, she might what? be back. Can you hear us, Valerie? I can hear you. We lost you for a minute. We saw your doors oh. and they are lovely. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and then we hopped to this table. So if there's any- Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, these are just my take and make bags. So I've done 10 sets and I've followed Paige Turner Adventures um, and I've done the materials for that. And then in my last two sets, I did these surveys where I asked people what they thought about this summer and to give me ideas for the fall. And then on this table, we have the baby and toddler set. So I, I did five for them and they're a little different and then my summer library program. And then we also made a mini boutique and we asked for free will donations. So our, our patrons were really missing the boutique, which is run by the friends, but many of them are elderly or have health conditions and they didn't want to do that. So when you come in, we ask that you wear a mask. And then we also have our signs that say either stop or come on in, and that is a visual indicator of how many people we have in the building. And then we also have masks available if people need to, to use one. We are still doing our puzzle exchange. They are hard to fit in the book drop, but um, we will take those at the front desk if we need to. And as you can see here, our inside book drop is closed. Mm -hmm. 
At our checkout stations, we have clear plexiglass, which is difficult to see, but we did tape around the entrance to make it more visible. And we do have a 30 minute limit on the computers. And I'm gonna go this way. So we are open right now. We have, um, we allow 10 people at a time in the building. And this is the entrance, I guess, to the children's area. We're, we're pretty much one room, so it's not a real entrance, but got some new books out and children's CDs. And then normally this is my take and make area where I have lots of fun materials out, but it's rather boring. <laughs> um, picture books, magazines, that is one thing that we have recently changed is we have gone to a three week circulation for magazines instead of a one week. And then we also have these little signs all over. One person or family per aisle to encourage social distancing. After the picture books, I have early readers. And that is going to be my next big project. I want to expand my early reader collection. On these taller shelves, we have the juvenile fiction. On this side, we have DVDs. And on these back shelves, we have um, nonfiction. And this is actually where my office is, and I will be going there shortly after I show you my baby and toddler area. So normally this is all set up super fun for um, dramatic play, but I had to put all that stuff away. And we normally have toys and stuff, but I just, I just put them all away so they wouldn't be tempting. And then the board book area with my flannel board and magnet board, which we also can't currently use. So it's been kind of a bummer, but I think it's the same everywhere. So I'm going into my office and I'm going to turn my camera around. Hi everybody. And now I can take my mask off. Um, I hope you were able to hear me and that I didn't talk too fast. Um, does anyone have any questions about my location or anything? Valerie? Yes. So the surveys that you you give to your patrons, what mm -hmm. types of questions are on there? Just really generic ones, or do you specify anything in particular? Um, this time they were very specific to Beanstack, um, and I got a lot of positive feedback about Beanstack. People liked having the online option. It was the first time that I have offered an online option for summer reading, so that was really nice. Um, and then I asked about um, Page Turner Adventures, what they liked or didn't like about that, and having video options for programming. Um, I also asked about the take and make bags, and that was overwhelmingly positive. Everybody wants me to keep doing take and make bags, even if I were to go to full-time normal programming, everybody wants take and make bags. Everybody loves those. Um, and then the last thing I asked about was fall story times. And I had a lot of people just, they don't know what they want. They, they don't know what school's going to look like. So they, they aren't sure what exactly they're looking for yet. So let me see if I can go to the chat. Um, we don't allow people in the stacks because they touch everything. How do we monitor that? We actually don't. We allow up to 10 people in the building at a time and um, just hope that they, they don't. Um, we have hand sanitizer. Oh, I was going to show you the bathrooms are closed. We do have the children's bathroom open, so they are allowed to go to that. Um, you know, if kids need to. We have a public bathroom right outside the building, um, but they're closing that in the next week or two. So I'm kind of worried about what we're going to do at that point. Maybe Hollis will allow us to open the bathroom. Um, I'm not sure. Um, <laughs> I've also seen kids lower their masks for various reasons. 
Um, yeah, Page Turner Adventures was one of the options for, um, I think there was a big email in the youth services. They did 10 weeks of videos, five days a week, and it was really affordable. We banded together with multiple other libraries. Um, I want to say it was only 200, 225 or something like that, and they gave us um, at least five videos a week that we were just able to put on the website under a password protected page and we have kept them up all summer. So um, a lot of people didn't watch them. I think the last time I checked I had 300 or so logins to the, the password protected site. Um, Anne made it really easy for us to do that. She uploaded them every week and she also has um, has a way that I can see the statistics on the IFLIS website, so that was nice. Oh, Anne, thank you for sharing my website with everybody. Um, any other questions about that stuff? Well, I've started thinking about fall. I haven't finalized my plans. Um, for baby and toddler, at this point, I plan on going ahead with the take and make bags and not doing videos because I, well, for one, I love Jaybrary. I hope you all know about Jaybrary. And that's where I encourage my families to go to when they're going to be on the computer. But I really don't encourage families with babies and toddlers to have screen time at all. I mean, I know they're going to, um, but I don't want to be an addition to what they're doing already anyway. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, so take and make bags for my um, babies and toddlers. For the older kids, um, I and a few other libraries are going to partner with Colossal Fossils, and we are doing 12 weeks of videos, and those range from videos for younger kids to videos that are meant for adults. Um, so that will cover some of that. And then if I do get requests for do for Miss Valerie to do a story time, I will do some videos, but that's not my favorite thing. So I have a hard time doing it. Um, <laughs> if a kid asks me to do one, of course, I'm going to do one, but I try to be really responsive to what my patrons are actually asking for and doing those things. Um, what else? We are doing some special events this fall. Um, but they're all either going to be take and make or virtual. We're doing our annual pumpkin decorating. So I'm going to give everybody a um, foam pumpkin from the Dollar Tree. And instead of getting together and decorating them together like we have the past three, four years, um, I'm going to encourage them to take a picture and send it to me to post on our Facebook or our website. Um, I still plan on doing Die November. Uh, I've done that for a few years now and dinosaurs are ever popular and um, I'm sure I'll just do like a take and make bag with that. I think the picture for the advertising um, for this event was my big T-Rex by my picture book display. That was at during Die November. Um, I also plan on doing a virtual NaNoWriMo this year, and NaNoWriMo is making it really easy um, because they're encouraging everyone throughout the state or country to world, I guess, to do only virtual activities. So that's nice. Um, for teens, we are doing a lock-in with Stacy from Augusta. That'll be my first lock-in, so I have no idea how that's going to go. Um, but that'll be virtual as well. And then um, throughout the spring, my teen group met weekly on Zoom, so I will pick that up again in the fall. My only in-person event is going to be National Night Out, and that is October 6th. And um, I don't know if any of your communities do that or not, but um, we are actually doing a drive-through this year. It's going to be held at the fairgrounds. We'll still have the fire trucks and the police cars and, and things all set up and they're going to have their lights on, but families will be able to drive in, get a bag with information from us, 
um, drive through, like maybe take pictures or say hi to the police and the fire departments and the EMTs. And then their last stop um, is going to be a little like Happy Meal bag. So we'll just hand them a bag of food because we had always provided food for that. Um, historically, we've had five, 600 people come to that. So we wanted to make sure we continued with it, but also in a safe and healthy way. So this year we invited the, um, the head of our Russ County Public Health Department and, and we came up with this drive-through plan. So let me look at the comments again at the chat and see if I missed anything. Um, Jay Brary. Oh, for the make and take for baby and toddler, for the summer, I just followed um, the weeks that they did with the CSLP. So I did the Kings and Queens and the Heroes, and I, I included the songs and finger plays and stuff from them. And then I also added, um, let's see, one month or one week I did sticky boards. Um, I'm totally blanking. We did um, little like handmade instruments and instructions for, for doing different types of those every week. Um, what else did I do? Some scratch art, um, just what I would normally do, activities that I would provide for my babies and toddlers at my weekly summer library events. So, and just the materials for that. Um, let's see. Oh, what's a sticky board? You don't know what sticky boards are? Um, so it's like contact paper, but it's in a shape. So you can buy those at Oriental Trading has them in different shapes. Um, I've also bought them from Discount School Supply, but it's, it's, the, say, it's the same as contact paper, except it's not see-through and it's already pre-cut into a shape like a butterfly or, or something else. So I love sticky boards. I love that even very young babies can, can use them because they can touch them. And um, I use feathers with younger kids. So they, um, it's not really, I mean, I guess it is a choking hazard, but it's a lot easier to get a feather out of a baby's mouth than a sequin <laughs> or glitter. Um, with older kids, I'll use glitter or sand or, um, I also use like cotton balls with younger kids too. So that's, that's nice. Uh, I think I covered everything. Um, our magazines, uh, three week circulation, that was just decided maybe a week or two ago. And um, I'm hoping that helps with our circulation, but also the, it was very difficult for people to do that one week turnaround. And we've seen that um, with the DVDs as well. Um, so we're hoping that that is helpful for people that they'll having that extra time will will make it easier for them. I know a lot of with our reduced hours, it is also more difficult to get here to the library. So we have been um, a lot more flexible with our fines. We are not fines free yet. I wish we were, um, but we're, <laughs> that's something that I'm working toward. So um, I saw a comment about my story walk and yes, it is. Um, my story this month is um, what's next with the little badger and his dad and, and he goes through and um, just asks what's next and then he's up all day. Um, and that is around the bottom of the library. And if you guys wanted, I could take you there, but I also don't want to take up all of our time on me. <sighs> the story walk has gotten very good reception. Um, I, I haven't shared a lot of pictures on Facebook, um, but people have been saying how much they really enjoy having an outdoor option and something that they can go to anytime. So it was well worth the money. I think we spent just a little over a thousand dollars total to install it. And then for upkeep, I'll only have the books and the lamination, you know, for, for each month. So it, it wasn't a cheap thing, but because it's permanent, it's, it wasn't too bad. That sounds great. Does anybody have any questions for Valerie? 
and so oh um for my story walk um stands the the posts are four by four inch um landscaping posts that you would have for like a deck or a fence and we did pay someone to drill the holes to um, put the posts in, and that was the actual, actually the most expensive part of the project. They, um, I think they were right around $500 to do that. Um, the posts themselves we got from Lampert Lumber, which is local to Ladysmith, and they actually sold them to us at cost, which was really nice of them. And then I roped my uncle into building the wooden platform um, he wasn't super excited, but he did it. He's an excellent woodworker. Um, and he also did everything at cost, um, and he helped install them. So they just have a clear plexiglass sheet over top and just two little screws is all I have to take out each month to change the story. So it's not too bad. I think that's it. Valerie, I just have one last question about your puzzle exchange. How does that work at the library? Oh, that is super easy. You just come and you take one or more. Um, we don't say that we have a limit <laughs> um, and we haven't really had a problem with people abusing it, but you just take one and then when you're done, you bring it back or you don't bring it back. We don't check them out or anything. It's um, it's it's just really easy. Um, we do sometimes get kids puzzles, but it tends to be mostly for adults, mostly 500 pieces and up. Um, but it's a it's very popular. Um, the other thing that we lend out is um, fishing poles because we are on the pond here. Um, you know what? Let's go outside. I'm gonna go outside while we're talking. So I have to put my mask back on. But um. This is my office, which is actually my halfway clean for once. Usually you can't even see my desk. So, you know, what? I'm going to go out with this emergency exit only door. Don't tell on me. Okay. So I'm outside again, and I'm going to turn my camera around if I can remember how to do that. Here we go. Okay. So I'm walking down the hill outside my office, and when I get down here, I will pan and show you what we've got going on down here. So my library is two levels, and this is the lower level parking, and that's the start of the story time trail, and that is the outside of our building. So our lower level meeting rooms are closed and will be closed probably until 2021, but I've been taking advantage of that space to do my um, take and make bags. So I've got everything spread out on the tables. So this is the beginning of my story time trail. Um, the Servite Center for Life gave me a grant this year, and that's how I paid for it. And they actually put in this Raymond Carlson trail just last fall. So I knew it was the perfect opportunity to go. This is like, we're going, we're going to walk and meditate while I talk to you. <laughs> um, Well, if we lose her for good, we can always switch to Monica. <laughs> oh, yeah, I was about to say, I'm like, Valerie. That library is in a beautiful location. Mm -hmm. In town. Huh? Okay. Okay, so we lost her. So I'm going to switch over to Monica. Let me find her. She just scrolled away. Ha -ha. Monica gets to be the spotlight video. Nailed it. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, awesome. Okay. Um, hi. I don't, I don't have a lake to walk you around or like gorgeous things. Um, so I'm going to take you through kind of my area and then we'll talk a little bit about programming. I am starting in my office. Um, so 
this is kind of just my own private office. Um, the difference here too is that we are currently not open to the public at all. Um, so I am not going to be putting on my mask when I'm in the kids area because there isn't anybody else in here. Um, just me. There are maybe three other staff people in the building and they're way across. We'll see if we see anyone. Um, I'm going to turn my camera around here. Maybe. Come on. There we go. Um, so that we can get a feel. So right now, um, I, I think I'm going to talk quite a bit of normal time versus COVID time. So the office that I just came out of, um, I don't work in this office very typically um, during my normal, like, non-COVID hours. But now that everything has changed, this has become the center of all operations. And you can see I have my teen prizes and I have my story time. Um, those are all my felt boards organized by, that says, based on a book, that says transportation, animals. Holidays, seasons, food, those are all felt boards um, and things that I can do. I know my camera's a little bit backwards because I switched it. Um, but then um, let's actually come out to the main area of the kids' room. Um, in normal non-COVID days, this is my desk. This is where I'm often to be found. We have this big old entryway into the kids' area. There's a pillar so you kind of come through this sort of entryway back. That's the main library back over there um, into this kid's area. This is my kid's room um, and it is empty. Um, also in non-COVID times, when we are open to the public, that door that you are looking at, that goes to my story time room and that's where I usually hold story times and meetings. Uh, I know a few of you have actually been here before and you're going to be shocked because right now it is full of furniture and junk and mess and craft staging area for make and take kits. Um, this has sort of become not a usable space. It has become where we put everything together as we are sort of putting things outside. And I'll show you that too. Um, also, for those of you who've been here before, like you'll notice all my furniture is gone. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. All my furniture gone. And your Legos, um, Monica, are gone. I know. Well, yeah. So those 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 glass cases are still there. I'm walking back toward it. Yeah. So these three glass cases right here, one, two, three, those normally hold Legos. We have a bi-weekly Lego session. Kids come. They make all kinds of things. And then they bring back, like, parents right or grandparents or people and you can come see them on display but I have nothing right now and it feels so empty um and so one thing so I do a lot of online programming I know Valerie didn't but I do a lot of it and I have been doing it from my home but then as of today I am now set up right here at this bench with a camera and a laptop, right? Got all kinds of things. Um, I've got these wonderful windows that bring all this natural light in. And so I kind of set myself up facing these windows. So this will be where I will be doing story time from um, starting in September. I'm taking next week off to move my son into college. <laughs> so my baby, my youngest, is going to college and I'm moving him in next week and possibly moving him home three weeks later. Ha <laughs> ha. Um, so question, do I pre-record programs right now? I do everything on Facebook live straight live. Um, and thank you. These windows are lovely. Um, the, the stained glass up there. This is such a sad story. Um, that, those were not there when I got the job, and there was a horrible tragedy that happened eight years ago here in River Falls, and three young girls were killed um, by their father, and it was just an awful tragedy, and so those are actually memorial windows for the three girls, 
we have a plaque with their names on them. Again, it's backwards, Amara, Sophia, Cecilia. Um, so sad, but um, we are not currently open for, oh it's, oh, it's only backwards to me. Thank you. Thank you, Anne, for letting me know. It's backwards to me, but if you guys can see it, awesome. Um, we are not open for appointments. We are having discussions about how to do that. Um, we are currently in a high risk level in both our counties. We actually straddle um, two counties. Um, I don't know if you can like out the window. <laughs> so I'm technically in St. Croix County, um, but that is the Catholic church, which sits on the dividing line. And so right behind that is Pierce County. It's one block that way. Um, so we serve two counties and in both of our counties, we have a high activity level. And because of that, um, both counties and the city have advised us not to be open, although we're trying to figure out ways that we can open for appointment, ways that we can maybe um, have some meetings. Um, I don't know, we're trying to figure it out, but right now we are not open for any of it. Um, this, this little blue cart is currently all I've got for board books. So, yikes. Right? It used to be in a really nice display um, cart, but I'll show you that in a minute because I stole it to do make and take kits. So I've been repurposing a lot of furniture. Um, hanging bags. The tall shelves are all of my JUV nonfiction. Um, and then the short shelves on this side, going all the way back, are picture books and then the easy readers and I do have an early chapter book section back here which is kind of awesome and holiday as well and then all along the wall on this side is JUV fiction and there's my coworker Kim <laughs> walking through the space um, and then again uh, the taller shelves have nonfiction and a couple of small collections. Uh, the question that I saw flash was display books. This is my new material. I display things there. And then during open hours, I have right by this pillar, I have two display shelves, um, this kind of clear acrylic one, which is uh, devoted just to kids. And this wooden one, which often gets pushed back in this middle area out here and changes often can be kids or adults. And so we have those displays. Um, I'm gonna walk out to the lobby. Um, again, this is kind of our main big adult area of the library. Um, we do have a teen section back there that I'll walk to in just a moment, but um, I wanna take you out here and show you, um, again, we're not open to the public, so we are doing lots of curbside service um, right now. There is a coworker, Ken, he is set up for curbside service, and we have all of these bags labeled, and every 15 minutes, um, up to five people can have a 15 minute time. We walk items out. You can kind of see through the doors, someone walking up right now, she just grabbed a bag. All items are pre-checked out, put in the bag with the date due slip, and we schedule a time using Google Calendar. Um, this side, there's a door on this side. Um, this is where I have a youth service um, assistant who sits here most days, and out these doors, we actually have, um, our summer reading grab and go prize cart, it gets pushed, um, it's, it gets pushed right out to this area. So when it is out, the prize cart and the make and take craft kit are sitting there. Right now we have brought them in. They are scheduled to be out 10 to two every day, except for Mondays, they are out until eight. Um, and then the other, this is the prize cart right here, this little red, which looks very empty, which is awesome that it is, but I've got two levels of all kinds of make and take kits. And you can see we have that sign. And we also did page turners. Um, so we label each bin as to whether it's page turners or as to whether it is part of bean stack. So some of these are bean stack crafts that I tied into my 
virtual summer reading program. Um, and then big sign there that we put out with it. And so that gets put right outside these doors every day, five days a week. Um, and even though we have somewhat limited hours where we can have someone sitting at this desk to watch, um, okay, I'm gonna differentiate between page turner and bean stack in just a moment for you. Um, anybody who calls and says, oh my gosh, I need to pick up a prize, I will push those out. This is super easy, they're all on wheels. Um, that red and blue cart that I'm using for the all the take and make craft kits, that was my board book. That's where all my board books used to be. Um, and they lived over kind of where the blue cart is now in a cute little display, but now it's being used for make and take. Um, differentiation between Beanstack and Page Turner. Um, I saw that question pop through. So Page Turner is the one Valerie was talking about that was the 10 week program. We actually put ours on a closed Facebook page. Um, and so every week I uploaded then that week's videos to a page, um, a closed Facebook page. And we have about, I wanna say 95 members of the page. Um, of that particular closed Facebook page. This is my teen corner. My lights aren't on because again, we're not open, but you can see my awesome, I'm trying to get where it's not a glare. I don't know. Anyway, it says teen corner. And we have on the shorter shelves here, these are all of our teen graphic novels. And then these taller ones right over here, here and here are teen fiction. And so this is kind of an awesome like nook back in the corner of the library and I have it differentiated by these colors. So the walls I painted um, orange and blue and green and purple. And so when you get into those kind of wild fun colors, that is how you know that you are in the teen area. Um, so back to Page Turner versus Beanstack. So Page Turner was the the ten weeks of like, and they had craft videos, they had like shows and circ. It's great. Beanstack, as you guys probably all know, that's how I did my general um, summer reading virtual program, and we we counted minutes, but then I added a whole bunch of activity badges to my Beanstack account where. You could, for example, there was a unicorn badge that you could get, and there was a couple of unicorn crafts, but then I did a, um, actually, I'm going to show you. I did a, a hunt. So we ordered these unicorn stickies that are on all the windows, and I think there's like 17 of them all throughout the library. This is the, you can see the back side of that sticker right there. So they all face out. So when you are walking around the outside of the library, there are, I think, 17 unicorns that you can find. And then if you go and do it, there was a Beanstack activity and you would type in there, hey, I found this many unicorns and then you could get your unicorn badge. And I had a dragon badge and I had a um, troll badge and a gnome badge. And um, so like, there's another unicorn in my office window right there, facing outside. There's a whole bunch down in my lower level so that when you walk around, much like Valerie, I have a two level library and on one side of the library, you're walking around the lower level and then you kind of go up a hill and you're walking around the upper level. Um, so I think that's generally main area. I do want to point out a couple of things collection-wise, we circulate puzzles in normal hours. We actually, all of our puzzles are now locked in a closet. <laughs> um, and then I also have all these kits that we circulate. Um, I have three bird watching kits, two rock hound kits, and these are uh, Pierce County park packs that actually come with um, a pass to get into the, if it's a Pierce County Park, which we have quite a few of, um, again, I straddle two counties. Um, we are preparing to be open at least partway. You can see the plexiglass. Um, we also used tape around the edges because we didn't want people to run into it. Um, and we've removed 
a ton of furniture throughout the library to not let people linger or discourage kind of sitting around. And we are planning, if we are able to open, to do similar things where you're limited by time. Um, rather than the stop and go passes that Valerie showed, we actually have, um, I'm actually, I'm gonna show you. We have passes all set up in that front lobby area. Let me walk back over here. Um, that we will be able to, um, we're getting as ready as we can to open so that we will be able to open on fairly short notice if our activity levels get to a safer point. Um, but right here in the meeting room, we actually have this whole thing set up where we have masks available. We have a 10 minute fast pass for people who just want to pick up holds or if they know where something is they're going to run in and grab it off the shelf and check it out. We have a 30 minute browsing pass where if you just want to go to the shelf and have 30 minutes to pick out something you're not sure what you want. And then we have a one hour computer pass which is only good to be in the computer lab. And so what we will do again depending on activity level our current plan is to determine on a day-to-day -day basis, how many of each of passes will be available. And if there aren't any passes available, then you have to wait your turn to come in the building. Um, and so we've kind of had a lot of meetings about how that is gonna work. Um, and so I'm gonna head back to my office and answer, right, thank you, um, answer a little bit of, um, if you have further questions or uh, talk a little bit about fall programming. So, let's head back to where I can sit down. Just sitting down is good. <laughs> okay. And we're in my office. I'm going to turn. There. That is me. Okay. Um, please feel free to ask me questions about anything you saw um, or want to know more. Thank you. I like my library too. Um, as far as fall programming goes, in terms of what I'm looking at, um, there's a lot up in the air. Um, again, we are working really hard on trying to figure out how to be open or partially open or maybe just have appointments. <laughs> where There's a lot of discussion happening, which may be obvious. Um, one of the things that I have been thinking about for fall is how to reach out to kind of the local school families. So in the school district of River Falls, we are um, pre-K through sixth grade are going to go back full time. Or I don't know how I feel about that. And then seventh through twelfth are doing a hybrid um, two days a week in person at school three days at home, nobody goes to school on Wednesdays, so half of the school will go Monday, Tuesday, and the other half will go Thursday, Friday, and they won't mix, so you'll have much lower body numbers in the district. Um, but there are parents that are nervous about this, and so I think I have about 300 families, roughly, that have opted to do online learning. And so as part of library programming, I reached out to, um, so there's a group, they actually have formed like a parent support group um, for some of those online learners. And we are looking into, so we do, we've traditionally done book clubs. Um, so we're looking at doing our book clubs via Zoom or GoToMeeting. Um, so we'll try to continue our virtual book clubs. Um, but as reached out to this um, at-home learner group and I'm trying to schedule some virtual meetups or some ways to um, support the mental health of the kids who aren't socializing or aren't being out there. And that's a really big kind of issue for me. I'm very concerned about mental health. So we may end up having just some fun meet groups. I do hope to do some take and make um, for teen. I'm saving some ideas, but I did not do any for teen over the summer. I only did um, the kids group. Um, and then I think I saw a question come through, but I missed it. So I'm going to see if I can see what that is. Let me see if I can see here. Um, 
How do I see that? There we go. Nope, that's not what I want. Um, Florence, do you want to read some? Yeah, do you want to share with me? Because apparently I don't know how to see anything. Sure. <laughs> okay, so, so someone asked, did, did the, your school district give you that information about the online learning families? So the school board gave me, like they publicly posted the number of families, um, but I, the, the, the group, so it's actually like a Facebook group, it's a support group for um, those parents, that is something I stumbled into because I've been at this library for eight and a half years and I have relationships with so many parents that somebody was like hey you should know about this and so they actually let me come into their Facebook group and then I reached out to the leader of the group um, the guy who had he's a dad and he put it together and I was like hey you know so I sent him an email and um, I was asking him about some collection development needs as well you know are there things that I can buy for the library that would support your group um, and what he came back with was that they're more interested in some virtual programming types of things. Um, although he may have some collection needs that come up as they figure out what they're doing. I think a lot of parents right now have no idea what to expect and there's a lot of chaos. And so one thing I'm finding when I try to get feedback from the community as to programming or what do you need is that people really don't know right now and they're not sure even how to answer that question. They're, they just are freaking out about everything. So I'm just trying to listen to what's happening and then figure out my programming based on that. So we will do the online story times. We'll continue to do that. Um, I do them all live. I put them on Facebook and then I try very hard to expire them within 30 days. Um, sometimes it's a little longer than 30 days and I'll go in ex and expire a bunch of videos at the same time. Um, I do download all of the videos before I expire them on Facebook and I have a YouTube channel that is a completely unlisted channel and I'm just storing all of my Facebook Live videos on this YouTube channel so if I ever need to go back to them, they exist. Um, we can put them on our website. We have a page where we have some early literacy stuff just available on our website, but it doesn't get a lot of hits. So I don't know that very many people go there. Um, we will be doing um, a fourth and fifth grade book club, a middle school book club, and a high school book club via GoToMeeting. Um, the tricky thing that I have to figure out with that is that we, in the past, we have actually purchased books for all the kids in book club and like it's been a big deal to have kids get free books and I don't know how to make that happen right now. So I've been exploring um, some ideas with that. And then another thing that is upcoming, I'm going to show you this in my office. Um, I am working with, there's a local group um, called Jumpstart to Literacy. And so all of these boxes, all of this, are donated books that we have gotten from um, this guy who started this early literacy organization called Jumpstart to Literacy. And he gave me, there's roughly uh, 200 books here and they are meant to be made into uh, make and take book and craft kits. And so I'm partnering with Pierce County Department of Health and I'm gonna take all those books uh, figure out a way to put them in a bag um, with some kind of an age-appropriate craft. So a lot of them are going to be baby toddler crafts, sensory bag, you know, to that type of thing. Um, and then we have options for distribution. So we can create a flyer and say there's a time and a day we're going to put those outside the library. And the Pierce County Department of Health is actually willing to send that information out to families that are really high risk, really high need, or um, in quarantine. And then she also, my contact at Pierce County Health also said, um, some families who have to quarantine are being asked to quarantine outside the home. So there are hotels, there are local hotels 
where families are just being sent and could we put some of the kits into these hotels? So that's one of the things going forward that I am working on for fall is having any local hotels that are quarantining families. I will have these grab bags with books and crafts just in a hotel waiting for any family who may be quarantined there. And so that's what we're hoping to do um, for fall for distribution there trying to think if there's anything else I missed. I don't have any big programs. I usually do big programs in the fall. I do a giant Halloween party with costumes. I do a giant New Year's Eve um, with 300 people in the basement of the library. Uh, and none of the things that I've done in the past, uh, I, I don't have a current plan for how to do them virtually or um, how to do a different kind of celebration. So I'm still kind of thinking about that. Um, one of the things that I am going to do for fall is um, keep using the virtual Beanstack program. Um, we are going to move Thousand Books for Kindergarten to Beanstack for fall. And then we are also going to try to come up with a community reading goal um, for all ages. Um, we're, I'm kind of working with the adult services librarian to figure out, do we want to do a number of books, a number of minutes? Um, and then I want to throw it out to the whole community and have people try um, maybe in the month of October to read, you know, 500 books as a community or whatever it ends up being. Um, we have to set that goal yet. So we're working on ways to use Beanstack further. We currently have it for um, the summer reading program for adults, teens, kids, and babies and toddlers. And we also have... Um, a very robust diverse stories program that I sort of took the read woke template from Beanstack, if you're familiar with it, um, and made it into its completely own thing and added extra badges um, for looking at anti-racism and anti-bias in all sorts of other areas. Uh, for example, there's a badge you can get for um, looking at anti-bias in film, a badge you can get for anti-bias and anti-racism in STEM, um, nature, there's a whole nature one, there's uh, kind of a self-care badge, um, there's all kinds of things in there. It's been really fun. So I spent a lot of time putting that together. And so I, one of the things we will do, regardless of whether we open or what level we're able to open at, um, we will continue to do the virtual programming. So using that. And our Beanstack numbers are not bad. So I think we can keep promoting that. And I mean, it's not a live summer reading program, obviously, but it could be worse, right? That's so. right. <laughs> you know, all things considered, I'm not too disappointed. Yeah. Oh, all the bags sitting behind me. I don't know if you guys can see those are all of my end of year teen prize baskets that the drawing is tomorrow. So that's what all those fancy things are that are going to get sent out to teens. Yeah, so if you have any other questions, please let me know. Um, I don't know why I can't see. There were two others. Okay, can you let One me of the other are? ones is a comment and a question. Okay. I'm a former teacher and am fairly new to library services, still learning Welcome. about statistics. <laughs> I've heard that make and take kits only count if patrons check back somehow to distinguish between kits that were distrib distributed versus actually used. Have you had included any response or call to action with your kits, possibly on Beanstack? That is really interesting. So what that, as far as statistics go, I'm actually unaware of because we've been counting the number of kits that have been taken. Um, but I did include um, on Beanstack, um, we actually, in the badge, put... Um, as one of the, when you go in to get the badge and it says you can do this, you can do this, and then there's like another little point. We actually put um, a phone number that you could text to, an email that you could send to, or um, I think there was a QR upload. And any, and what we said was, we encourage you to send us a picture of the thing that you created. And so I actually have gotten 
a number of pictures throughout the summer of kits. Um, well, one of the kits that we did as part of the Beanstack, I think it was in the fairy tale badge, but I had them make a fairy garden and we distributed little bags with like colorful glass beads and popsicle sticks and little like figurines. Some of them were dinosaurs and some of them were fairies and some of them were, um, yeah, I'm not, there were all sorts of different things. Um, and for all of the kits I, w I included in that badge, hey, send me a picture. And I probably got 25 or 30 fairy gardens throughout the summer that kids sent me um, in various stages, right? I mean, some of them were like full on, we went outside and we made a fairy garden. Um, some of them were decorating a little pot in their house. And I did get one picture where the mom actually emailed me and she was like, I wouldn't let my kid make a fairy garden. So we took all your stuff and painted a picture of it. And I was like, fine. Um, you used it, you did it. You sent me this sparkly painted picture. As long as they're engaging to me, that counts as using it. Um, I, we did a book cover challenge. I got a number of pictures of those. Um, we did a recreate an art photo challenge. I got pictures of those. So to some degree I do get feedback. I'm not really using that as stats per se. I just am using it as ways to connect with my patrons to build that relationship um, and to make them feel important and heard and like, hey, your librarian cares about you. <laughs> kind of thing. Um, so yeah, count them as program participation stats. There you go. Thank you, Sean. Um, it has been interesting knowing what to count for, you know, for all of this, but you know, we, we're doing the best we can. So uh, I, I get decent stats for like the Facebook story times. Um, I only count live views on that. But, you know, it, I think we're all figuring it out as we go. And I think um, one nice thing is I'm getting nice support, not only from like the state of Wisconsin for like, hey, we're figuring it out, you're good. But like my director and even my city has been really awesome about just keep what you can, we'll figure it out. It's good. <laughs> Infographics, yes. Yeah, there's all kinds of good stuff coming in the comments. So if you guys can read that, I'm seeing them flash across my screen, um, which is good. Monica, did you see the Jumpstart to Literacy see questions? Somebody just wanted more information about that. So the website on that one, yeah. So it's a local guy. Um, he was a school principal over on the other side of the state um, in the Milwaukee area for years and retired here to River Falls and started this own early literacy um, sort of organization. And his mission is to get hands in the books of um, at-risk and high needs kids. And he has been here, we've partnered for years and the website is Jumpstart and it's the number two. So it's Jumpstart to Literacy. I think if you Google that, you will see Tony's page. Um, and he's just, his whole goal is how do we get books out there? And uh, I know he's worked with a couple of libraries that are close to me. I believe he's worked with Prescott and Ellsworth um, to also just, he just gives you books to like, if you have a way to get them to people, <laughs> to get them to kids. Um, it's been, I'm, I've partnered with him. We used to, during open times, we used to do a once a month big evening family story time. It was on the second or third Tuesday of the month at like 6 p.m. So, you know, post dinner time and we would get 30 or 40 or 50 people in the room and then everybody who came would just pick a free book off his table and they would always, um, Tony and his wife would always provide snacks and healthy food as well. So we kind of tied it into this whole event where I would do stories, they would do free books and snacks and then families could come and spend an hour doing that. Um, that's the kind of thing that right now I'm struggling to figure out how to carry forward. We can't have 50 people in a room. We can't, right now we don't have any meeting room open. I can't do story times. 
Um, if I am told by my director, if the threat level in our county goes from high to medium high, or maybe medium, they will consider letting me do outdoor story times. <laughs> but right now I can't even do that. So, yeah. <laughs> Okay, and then there's another question too. Just wanted to be sure um, you saw this one. How do you plan to enforce the time limit passes when you are open? So we've had a lot of conversation about that. And right now, I'm not sure that we're going to be super um, aggressive about policing the time limits. We are going to ask um, people to honor those time limits and do general observation. And if we do see people who are, you know, blatantly abusing it, then we will step in and say something. But I think there's a difference between someone who accidentally spends 45 minutes browsing on the 30 minute browsing pass, as opposed to someone who's like, I'm going to sit here for six hours and just breathe them. Like, that's what we're trying to avoid. We're not trying to be, um, overly policing. We're just trying to gently remind people that everybody needs a turn and we want to encourage you not to linger um, for very long. We have really great ventilation system, but uh, let's be careful. Um, and then the, I just saw another question pop through, but I, I, couldn't, <laughs> I couldn't read it fast enough. <laughs> So that last question is, so have you considered virtual story times with daycares or maybe classes or, or other organizations? So I have, um, and I've also considered, um, I was working with a daycare this summer and we were really trying to do outdoor story times and we were unable to do it. Um, I have considered virtual story times and in fact, um, Kim, the librarian that you saw walk through while we were doing a tour, she is the... Um, reference and technology librarian and she's amazing and she and I have been working on different uh, broadcasting software that we can use to um, actually broadcast like to a close you know like maybe to a daycare center or we can use it to uh, we're going to do some author visits um, so like if someone zooms in from one place and we have someone in a different location and we want to take both of those and broadcast it on Facebook. So we're working on streaming software and I feel like that's, I mean, like I'm getting a lot more tech savvy <laughs> than I ever was before COVID. Um, I guess if you want to look for a silver lining in the cloud, I am learning how to do things like that, but I'm totally, yes, uh, looking at partnering with daycares, partnering with um, school system, um, reaching out to at-home learners, trying to figure out how can the library support what's happening in the community. And that's my biggest focus right now. Okay. And then there's a, a couple comments. Yeah. Um, one of the comments is conversation with open libraries indicates that most people come in, stay a few minutes and leave, especially if no furniture or toys. That's what we think will happen. Yes. And yeah. then another comment is, I don't know about the response requirement for make and takes for DPI. Stars at the beginning of, or stats at the beginning of the summer, so didn't have to plan for that. I will do something with them in the fall, but my library board has been very pleased with the patron response and think they are worthy of our resources. Yeah, I agree. I. I don't know what's going to be required, but I mean, we are, t I'm just taking as many stats as I can and reporting that to our board every month. You know, here's how many kits are going, here's how many people are using the vir virtual Beanstack program, um, here's how many tickets are being put in our virtual ticket baskets. I have all kinds of numbers that I can give them, and they love that. So um, I assume I can use some of these for DPI at some point, but I mean, Honestly, I think they're doing the best they can too. Um, the question was, um, how many people are in your department? Just me. Just, just, just me. <laughs> <laughs> I technically have a part-time. So there's, so there's a, a woman named Sally who 
is a circulation assistant, but like if I need her, I'm allowed to take her. And she is 20 hours a week, um, probably about half of that I can get. So she's a person that I can say, I need you to prep all of these make and take craft kits. So I guess it's technically not just me. There's maybe like point, point three. I maybe have like a point three part-time person that helps me. She's point five, but I don't get all of that. <laughs> So, um, yeah. Well, that was great. Um, Valerie and Monica, thank you so much for hosting for us. It was just awesome. Awesome. If well, anybody has any other questions for them, we will take a few <laughs> minutes. <laughs> and also, I I'm hear you, Valerie. Like, I'll write my email in here so you guys can email me if you are interested in hosting at your library like Monica and Valerie did today. It was really fun. It was lots. It was really interesting, I thought, to get a new perspective or your perspective on what's going on at your libraries. And I just love to see them too. It was fun <laughs> to see your libraries. Well, thank you guys so much for allowing me to brag up, <laughs> brag up my space, you know. I'm pretty proud of it. And I enjoyed seeing Valerie's as well. I've actually been, Valerie, I've been to your library and it's really cool. <laughs> so. Thank you. It is weird without the furniture and the toys and, and all of the, the things that I have spent five years making yes. this fun interactive space and it's, so boring now, but at least we're still able to provide books and materials for people to enjoy at home. So, yeah. Would anybody else like to tell us what you're doing for fall programming or your ideas? Or we can save that for another time. <laughs> Okay, well, thank you everybody for attending. We hope you learned something and, and had as much fun as I did. Thank you very much. And with that, I think we'll sign off. Bye everybody. Bye, and if you guys wanna see it again um, or wanna share it with someone, we have a brand new YSS YouTube page. Because <laughs> Dan and I are crafty and just like, we're gonna just start one. So we're starting one and this will be our first video. So like, subscribe, share widely. <laughs> and thank you guys all so much for joining us. And thank, thank you, you. Monica and Valerie. What a delight. Bye.